Okay, now that we have taken a look at what .NET is, well, at least provided a general overview of what .NET is, let's move away from such a heavy topic and focus on something that's a little lighter. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a simple program. Now, at this point, you guys should have gotten your hands dirty. You should have written the Hyperion project. Remember, the point of that exercise was not to go in there and learn everything that you were doing, but just get comfortable with writing code. We wanted you to see those curly braces a lot. We wanted you to see the terminators a lot. We wanted you to see how we were indenting our code. Not that that really meant a lot to you, but we wanted you to see it. We also wrote that Windows application where we had the button bouncing around the screen and our little simulated gravity. Again, getting your hands dirty, getting you familiar working with code. But we've never really stopped to take the time to talk about the anatomy of a very simple program. Where do you start? And what I want to do is I want to focus on a console app so that we don't have to worry about any windows and stuff like that. And I want to build something that gives us just a little hello world. And then I want to enhance it just a little bit so that you guys have a very basic idea of flow within that application. Now, right now, we're looking at our Visual Studio IDE. It's sitting here. It's idle. It's just waiting on us to create a new project. But guess what? I want to strip it all away. I don't want to use the IDE for writing this simple program. No siree. Logan, what I'm going to have you do is use Notepad or any text editor. I don't care, but Notepad we got quick access to. I want you to use Notepad to write our source file. And then from a command prompt, I want you to compile that source file and then execute our assembly. Sound good to you? That means we'll be looking at things like a source file and the compiler as we go it. through making this program. You got it. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not how we're going to be writing all of our programs as we progress further and further in this course. We're going to be using Visual Studio. We need the tools. It'll make life much easier for us. But by stripping all of that away, we can focus on the simplistics of writing a simple program. So let's go ahead and jump over here to our whiteboard first. Now, we're going to write a program. What's the first thing we need? Well, let's think back to the what is C-sharp lesson. What is C-sharp? It is an object-oriented language. Everything in C-sharp is an object. So that means we have to start out with class. So let's go ahead and start out with the word class. Or another way to say that would be that functionality has to be contained within a class. That's correct. So you're going to have to have a class. And we're going to call it Hello World. Now, class is lowercase, all of it. Nothing is capitalized. And in this particular case, I've drawn Hello World out where the H and the W are capitalized. Why am I pointing this out? Because as we said previously, C Sharp is a case-sensitive language, so that is important. So now that I've written out class Hello World, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put some blocking braces in. So here is an open curly brace, and down here is a closing curly brace. Why am I doing this? I am setting up a blocked region of code that is going to belong to the class Hello World. So everything that goes inside these braces is part of the class Hello World. So Logan, let's just slowly build on this. Now let me do this first. I'm going to erase this because, well, it might just look confusing to our complete beginners. And let's write this over in, I don't know, Notepad. Notepad sounds good. It should be a very general and familiar editor. Now, to write this, we first need to decide where we're going to keep the source file on our hard drive. Okay. We've decided to make a CS folder on the C drive, just okay. to keep things simple. Now, inside of this CS folder, I'm going to right-click to make a new text document. So here we have our text document, and we'll name this hello world.cs. So hello world.cs and confirm the file name change, and you can see it already has the icon of a CS file indicating that it's linked up as a CS file if we were to try to open it. But in this case, we're going to do an open with so that we can get in it with Notepad. So I'll come down to open with. There we have Notepad, and now we have our file loaded in the ever-so-familiar Notepad. Okay, so let's define the simple structure of our class Hello World. All right, just as you had drawn on the whiteboard, I'll do class Hello World drop down and add our opening curly brace, drop down two more lines, and add our ending curly brace. All right, there you go. Very nice, very simple. Though there's no functionality in place, as a matter of fact, there's no entry point 
in place. So that is the next thing that we're going to need to define. When we compile our program to an assembly, the common language runtime needs an entry point. Basically, where in this program do we start? And we're going to start in a static method called main. So the next thing Logan's going to do is he is going to create a static void main with a capital M. That is very important. And then our open and closing parentheses. And then he's going to, once again, drop down and do an open curly brace and a closing curly brace. Now, notice these curly braces. This guy is still within that curly brace, the closing curly brace for the class hello world definition. And then up here, this is so all of this code. This is what I said earlier. It resides inside of and belongs to class hello world. Another thing you'll notice is that I have indented. Notice how this is pushed in. So we have pushed in several spaces this way. Is that required? No. We could have taken everything that's in here. As a matter of fact, let me see if I can do this. There we go. We could have taken everything in here and butted it right up to the edge, right over here. But it would have made it difficult to read the code. By indenting things, check this out. When I'm looking at this code, I can simply say, okay, here we are, static void main. Who is this in? Where does it reside in the program? All I've got to do is look back up the program to the per first place that's not indented, and I can say, ah, this method right here belongs to the class hello world. Makes sense. And this will become even more apparent in just a moment when Logan starts adding code inside of the static void main method. So with this, Logan, let's go ahead and just put this area into our code over in Notepad. Okay, so here is Notepad with the code we've started on. I'm going to indent, and I'm going to indent by using four spaces, um, just because the tab character with the Notepad is a little bit long. It's very long. So we're now indented, and we need to type out static void main. With a and capital M. Our, and then we'll have our open and closing parenthesis. We'll drop down a line, keeping the same indention, and we'll have our opening curly brace and our closing curly brace. There you go, guys. Hopefully you're following along and you have the exact same thing. Again, casing is very important. Notice at this point we haven't used any terminators anywhere. Everything that we've typed out is very specific and required. Let's jump back over here. Hello World is our class name. We came up with that name. But everything else that you see in here, you have to have there. You have to have an entry point into your program. This is, once again, where the common language runtime knows where your program starts. So basically, the first line of code that's going to reside, where Logan's about to type, right there, when all code inside here is done. So it starts with the first line, and once it gets to the last line, when we get to this guy right here, for our main method, that's it. The program is over. It terminates. So, Logan, what I'm going to have you do now is actually create some functionality in this. Let's use, from our base class library, we'll pick on system. Because you guys may notice we're not using any namespaces at the moment, so we'll have to use the full naming here. So, system.console. dot right line that is a capital L and then we'll go in here and we'll tell it to hello world and then we will do that and I can squeeze out just a little bit more here close our brace and we'll put a terminator terminating the end of this statement so, Logan, let's go ahead and put this functionality into place. And as you guys have already seen, what the console.writeline is going to do for us is simply echo whatever text we've put in here, which we're going to put hello world. It's going to echo that text out to our console. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right. Jumping back over to code, let's move up and then indent into our static uh, method or our main method and see, indent some more so that we're completely inside of uh, main. Now, let's access system.console.writeline. We'll have an open parenthesis and begin a double quote. 
and inside of that double quote we'll type out hello world and the quotes close the parentheses and add a terminator okay the terminator is required it is what is telling our runtime that this is the end of that statement now that's everything we need to have a functioning program we've got our class within our class we have our entry point which is our static void main method and within that we've got some code we're telling it to do something we're telling it to write hello world out to the console so now Logan what we need to do is save this all right and we can simply go to file and it's saved because we've already defined this as hello world.cs okay so right now if you open up and show what's inside the folder cs well, notice there's only one thing. It's 1K in size. It's called hello world.cs. So now I want to compile it. So to compile it, what we need to do is bring up a command prompt. So let's go to start and then run. And one of the many ways we can load a command prompt would be typing CMD. Okay. So CMD, there we are. Now let's go ahead and change directory over to CS. So I'll give the full path. I'll go C colon backslash. CS. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do a DIR to get a directory listing. Now the only thing that is in there is our hello world.cs at 110 bytes. Now that we have an accurate representation of size. All right. So to compile this, it's really simple. The compiler is CSC, standing for C sharp compiler. Okay, simple enough. So let's go ahead and type that in. All right, I'll type in CSC. Okay. And now we need to specify the name of the source file to compile. That is, of course, hello world.cs. Okay, and the .cs at the end, hopefully by now you guys have figured out that that stands for C sharp. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And hey, no errors. If you happen to have typed anything wrong or left off a symbol while following along, you would get errors right now letting you know that you messed up and you need to go back and check your code. All right, let's do another DIR to get a new directory listing. Aha, so now we have a hello world.cs and a hello world.exe. We have an assembly in there now. Beautiful stuff. And as a matter of fact, if we look back over in the folder, we'll see it in the folder as well. So there's our hello world.exe. Excellent. Now, let's jump back into our command prompt and let's execute hello world. So, hello world.exe. Rerun. And it says hello world. It writes that out to our console. That's fantastic. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. So, there you guys go. Very, very simple application defined with class. It has a static void main method. Now, there are other ways to do our main method. It can return nothing or it can return an int. It can take in, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to get real deep into this, but let's go ahead and jump back over here to Photoshop real quick, and I'll just point this out. It can return nothing, which is void, or it can return an int if we want to send some number back out. And it can take in no parameters, as we are doing right here, or we can take in a string array of arguments if we wanted to. Again, it's kind of outside the scope of what we're trying to show at the moment. I just wanted to point out, it's like four different flavors of the main entry point that we can create. So now that we have this in place, Logan, let's see if we can make it this a little bit more interesting. Check it out. Let's do something like this. I'm just going to clean this up, guys. So at this point, you should have a basic idea of why you're seeing all of these spaces in our program. Now, we're going to make this a little bigger. So I'm going to move that curly brace down. And what I'd like to do is create some other method right here. So I want some other method with a structure. So he's got open and closing braces. And then we're going to close the whole class off way down here. So all of this code, of course, belongs to the class Hello World. And, of course, this line right here, by the way, is, is you saying, is it going to be, you know, uh, public, uh, and then call it whatever you want, and take in arguments if you want to. Just have some fun with it, and then have it do something down here. As a matter of fact, i got an idea. Let's set it up in such a way that we can change Hello World. Let's change Hello World to something like get ready, and then let's do a call to this method down here so that we can show us jumping to it. And then from inside here, maybe print hello world from in there. 
And then after that, we can print out again something along the lines of now leaving to show that we're leaving this method and going back. And then finally print out one more time over here, we're back. That way we can jump around between our methods. We can almost watch what's actually happening inside the program because as far as the output that we see in the console, we're going to see output line by line. Yeah. But this will give some indication of how the code is actually executing inside the program. Exactly. All right, let's set that up real quick. Right. You'll notice at this point I'm just going to start using squigglies and all because I don't want to write all this out. Right, because uh, we saw one method. Now we're just going to make another method with a different name. So let's jump down maybe two lines and let's indent over. Now let's make another static. Uh, wrong button. So we have our static. Let's make this method also void, but let's call the method something like say hello, because you were talking about moving the hello world yeah. line into this. So we'll make a method called say hello. And then we don't need to take any parameters into this method, so I can just use an open and closing parenthesis. And then we'll jump down, we'll put in our blocking, and at this point, because we're doing say hello, I might just get lazy and move this entire line by cutting it and then pasting it. So we have our method that now runs the say hello. Actually, now go ahead and paste it back up above because we'll do the, I like the idea of saying get ready. All right, we well, need to say something to begin with. So No, 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 no. We don't have to say something to begin with, just so that our beginners don't get confused with, oh, we have to say something. We're just going to do that as a letting you guys know we're about to make a call to the say hello method. Right. That's an, uh, a good thing to point out is that we could have nothing inside of our main entry point. Mm -hmm. That would mean we'd have a program that would begin and then show no output and then end. It would right. still be a perfectly valid program. Though. Right. All right. But in this case, we do want to see things. So, so let's change hello world to say get ready. All right. Dot, dot, dot. All right. So now on the very next line, let's make a call to the say hello method. Okay. And we can call it by just using the method name, say hello, followed by opening closing parentheses, and then following that with a terminator. Okay. So let's see. After we say hello, do you want to say anything else after the uh, say hello runs? Yeah. Let's say um, you, can, you can copy and paste if you want that or type it all out. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and say... We are back in main. All right. We are back in... Capital M for main. Main. And we can even put the parentheses inside of that if we wanted to indicate that that was a method. Okay. And terminator. All right. So let's see. Now what's going to happen when we execute this application... Let me jump over here real quick. I want to make one change. Sure. Just, I don't like the look of the parentheses without the uh, colored highlighting. So I'm going to change it to say in the main method. Okay. So let me do this. If I come over here and, um, hey, oops, back hey. up. <laughs> My bad. So uh, it's what happens when you have hotkeys defined on your Wacom tablet. Let's say, impressive, you're writing text with your uh, <laughs> so, so here's what's going on. So our entry point into our program is going to be in through static void main. The first thing that is going to happen is going to be us writing out get ready. So we're going to see get ready written out on the screen. The next line that gets executed is going to be say hello. This is a method call. We're going to basically remember where we're at, and we're going to jump down here to the say hello method. We're going to enter right here. So we enter into say hello, and what do we do? We write out to the console, hello world. This is the end of the method. There's nothing else to do between these blocking braces. So since this is the end, we return back up to our caller, which was right here. Well, there's nothing else to do on this line. We've processed it. We're done. So we come down here, and what do we do on this line? We once again write out to the console, we are back in main method. Matter of fact, I might throw in uh, just the word the. So we're back in the main method. So when this runs, what we should see is get ready, hello world, we are back in the main method. Let's go ahead and save this. All right, file, save, and we're done. And let's go back over to our command prompt. And you can go ahead and CSC this guy. So we'll compile hello world.cs again. Okay, no errors. Looks good. Now let's go ahead and type hello world. And this time around, look at what we get. Get ready. Hello world. We are back in the main method. Very nice. So very simple application. Now we're actually doing a little bit of jumping around. 
If we come back over here, actually, let's jump back here. So static void, say hello is what you called it. So real quickly, let's just jump over here and write it in. And it was say hello, right? And a capital S on the say. That was. I guess I could have made it lowercase to follow the standard that we were coming up with to oh, have that lowercase for a private method, but that's okay. Right now we're we're just very simple here. Let's not bog ourselves down with naming conventions and casing, etc. Okay, so here we are. The anatomy of this application. What does it consist of? It consists of let me erase this out so I can start scribbling all over it again. It consists of a single class. The class is Hello World. Inside the class, it consists of two methods. Our static void main method and our static void hello, say hello method. Okay? So, two methods inside. This method is the special one because it is the entry point into our program. The very first line of code inside of the curly braces here is where execution begins. So we come in here, we write out, get ready. So I'll just, that says get ready. Then we duplicate it, or actually, no, then what we did is we did a call to say hello. Terminator. So when we process this line, what happens? We actually come down here and we run this method. When we get to the end of this method, as I highlight my curly brace, we then return back up and we continue executing with the next line being we're back. So I'm just going to do all that and we're back and Terminator. Okay, so simple class, two methods, entry point being into main, say hello being our other one. From within main, we're calling say hello then we're returning back. We're finishing things off. Very, very simple application. Logan, is there anything you'd like to add to this? Um, no, with the uh, not to anything that we've done. I mean, that's that's all straightforward. We could do little things like um, add a using and use the system namespace. Oh, let's have do to it. Use system on all of our uh, our calls. Sounds very good. So just one um, last quick demonstration. We could jump up before we define the class and say that we are using system and since we're using the system namespace we could go to the rest of our code and take out the system dot fully qualified namespace so we can reduce it down to just console and the reason I was um, I wanted to do this is to make it more familiar to like the Hyperion app where we generally had system in our using okay so we're using within the names uh, system namespace and that allowed us to very frequently use console dot right line without having to use system dot console dot okay. right line let's go ahead and save it and compile all right save and CSE hello world dot CS Everything seems to compile fine, so we could run hello world.exe, and let me type exe correctly, <laughs> and there we go. There we go. So just wanted to point that out to get to bring this one step closer to the world we were working in in, uh, in Hyperion. Right. Now, you want to let them know back over there where you're typing out hello world.exe. They don't have to type out .exe. That's true. Just running things from the command line, you can just, just type out the name, world. and it'll look for an executable or batch file or something that the command prompt can execute. Right. So there you guys, there you guys go. Um, very simple program, followed through how it works. Biggest thing is uh, the structure, how it is set up. We start with a class. All of this stuff residing in a class, all of the functionality, if you will. Of course, we've got our using outside of the class, but we've got a starting curly brace and an ending curly brace. We have our entry point into our little class entry point into the whole program, excuse me, let me say it that way, which is our static void main. And of course, we've got its open and closing curly braces with all of its code that's associated with it or that belongs to that method. And then we have the static void method say hello. And once again, all of the code is blocked in an open and a closing curly brace for the method say hello. So that's it. And we've traced it and we've compiled it out in the command prompt doing it ourselves. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to demonstrate here in the simple anatomy of a program. And that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.